Greetings, I'm Dr. Doug Campbell, and I'd like to talk about why anybody should care about evidence, citations, and plagiarism. Now, let's say you are taking a class. I'm a history professor, uh, so why don't we go with like a college history class? Uh, and your teacher has asked you to produce a paper, an essay, or something like that, has insisted that you cite all of your sources. And perhaps you're thinking like, okay, why? Why do I have to do this? You know, is this just another one of those annoying time-wasting academic hoops that I have to jump through for this class? And it's just a giant pain in the butt. Because obviously, any course, there are going to be some of those things. Not in this instance, though. Um, if you're considering the question, why should anybody care about evidence, well, you know, the main answer to that is you should care about evidence if you want to make good arguments that other people take seriously. Because without evidence, I mean, obviously you can say whatever you want. You can make any sort of assertion uh, that you care to, but it is merely an assertion. It's just an opinion, right? And you've heard the old cliche that everybody is entitled to their opinion. That's because everybody has one and opinions are worth precisely that much and precisely that little. Now, you know, your family, your friends, uh, the people who know you, the people who love you, the people who understand what a rainbow in the universe you are. They give your opinion weight simply because it is your opinion, because they value you as a human being and as a person. On the other hand, though, if you are not merely producing something for an audience of family and friends, but you're putting something out there for a general audience, then like all of those people, they do not know you. They do not love you. They do not understand your rainbowness, uh, and they have no reason uh, to take your opinion at all seriously. Their question is going to be like, why do I care what this person thinks? Why should I give a crap? Uh, and the evidence is the why they should give a crap part, that it takes your argument from the realm of being merely an assertion, merely an opinion, uh, and provides a solid foundation for it. So if you provide evidence, essentially what you are saying to your audience is, look, I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. I can, I can prove it. So if you don't believe me, like you don't have to take it on faith. You can check out my sources. You can examine the evidence for yourself. You know, you can check page 36 in such and such a book, or you can check the following website, uh, and you will see that I am correct. Uh, so it's not just an opinion, uh, it is a reasoned argument that is based on solid evidence. Um, and, you know, without that, you're just talking. With evidence, you've got something that other thoughtful people uh, need to consider seriously. It carries weight for them even if they don't know you. Now, in the scholarly world, we have various methods of citing that evidence. There are formal ways of doing that. In my own discipline of history, we use Chicago Manual of Style slash Turabian footnotes or endnotes. Um, that's not the only method of citation, though. Uh, the Modern Language Association, MLA, so that's most English or literature classes. Uh, that discipline uses in-text parenthetical citations. Um, the American Psychological Association, the APA, that's the default format for most of the behavioral and social sciences. Uh, they use a slightly different uh, in-text citation. Um, and ultimately, like, all of those work. Uh, it's just a, a matter of, of preference, um, sort of subjective, the discipline or the person or what have you. Uh, so you know, 
the context that you're writing in, you should use the appropriate format for citation. And that is something that you might say, well, why do we have all of these different uh, uh, formats for citations? Why can't all the disciplines just get their act together and pick one? Um, that's a very valid complaint, and really they should. As a historian, I think everybody should use Chicago-style footnotes, personally, but uh, obviously other people have different opinions on that. Um, and learning different citation formats, that is one of those annoying hoops that you might have to jump through. Um, that said, though, using some formal method for citing your sources so that your audience can check your evidence, that is important and that is something you should care about nailing down and getting right. Now, those questions of evidence and citations do kind of lead us to the issue of plagiarism as well, which is the practice of taking content from another source and from another author uh, and representing that as if it was your own uh, without any sort of appropriate citation. And if citations and evidence are important, obviously not, not using them, that's, that's kind of a bad thing. Um, now, again, you might have the question, well, why? Why does it matter? Why, why can't I just snag something off the internet, drop it into my own work, and that's an easy way to get an assignment done? Uh, if, I, if I don't get caught, I mean, you know, who cares? Uh, well, there, there are probably three reasons why you really should care about avoiding plagiarism uh, and making sure to cite your sources. Uh, the first one is, is kind of the moral argument that you know, it just makes you a garbage human being to take the fruits of somebody else's labor, like something that somebody else worked hard to come up with and to craft and to just rip that off and represent it as if it were your own. That's, you know, that's not cool. That's awful. That's, you're, you're part of the problem if you're okay with doing that. You're why we can't have nice things. Uh, there's also a practical argument to be made, too, that assumably the reason why you're taking the class that you have to produce the paper for is that you are hoping to learn something, to acquire and practice certain skills. For a history class, probably those skills would involve analyzing complex issues from the past, uh, dealing with various documents, and crafting well-thought-out arguments that are based on evidence drawn from those documents. You know, that's what you're there to learn, that's what you're there to practice, and if you're just like taking other people's work, like you're, you're actually not getting anything out of that. You're not learning uh, anything, so you're just wasting your time in whatever class you happen to be taking. So, you know, you're not just screwing somebody else, but you're screwing yourself. Uh, and finally, like just in terms of consequences, you probably will get caught. Um, uh, students invariably like they think that oh you know who's gonna know? Well, obviously there are all sorts of uh, plagiarism checker software packages that compare the text of whatever it is you produce to other papers and things that students elsewhere have turned in, uh, as well as the entire internet, and they make it relatively easy to catch plagiarizers. But I mean, even without that stuff. Um, like most academics, most people teaching classes like this, like I'm under no illusions that I personally have like a lot of useful skills. Um, you know, in a zombie apocalypse, I'm probably going to be toast. I spent nine years in graduate school and I didn't get anything that is going to, you know, allow me uh, to prosper in a, a sort of road warrior-esque apocalyptic situation. But what I spent those nine years in grad school doing was going over pieces of writing and reading them and analyzing them very carefully. Um, and I also have graded a lot of student papers. Like I know what I can expect from even the brightest college student and there are certain dead giveaways. Like, you know, it's sort of like, uh, Liam Neeson and Taken, like, I have a certain set of skills, and my skills aren't super useful, but they do happen to come in very handy for catching plagiarizers. And, and most people who teach at college are, are like that. They have that same skill set, uh, and plagiarism is just going to stick out like a sore thumb. Like, you won't, you don't think you're going to get caught. You will. Uh, and 
you're going to fail the course if that happens. Like most, most college teachers and most institutions take that super duper seriously. Uh, and so you should as well. So obviously you shouldn't plagiarize uh, because if you do, like you're an awful human being, uh, you're not getting anything out of the course you're taking and you're probably going to get caught anyway and fail it. Uh, and, you know, the, the stuff with evidence, citations, you should care about that because you want to make good arguments um, and you want to make arguments that are going to be taken seriously by the rest of the world. So, you know, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that clarifies matters and you now are no longer wondering why should I care about evidence, citations, and plagiarism.